that remarkable year. Children born out of the summer of love into 1968 are 20 years old this year. Tonight we present our introductory essay from a reporter who 20 years ago was himself a 20-year-old, Don Shelby. Feeling somewhat older now, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Lots of people who lived their youth through 1968 remember it romantically as the year the young stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, united against the old, and won. Others remember it as a confused, discordant year, a tragic year. If 1968 were a song, it seemed to play at a speed too fast. Lots of us just didn't catch the meaning of the words. It is true we found our voices in 1968, but we didn't sing in unison. We shouted the lyrics at each other, and the word was simply no, and we meant it. 1968 opened with a promise that the war in Vietnam that had lingered these past years, that had continued to kill ever-increasing numbers of our young, was about over. The U.S., our leaders told us, had seen the light at the end of the tunnel. Very, very encouraged. I've never been more encouraged during my entire uh, almost four years in country. I think we're making real progress. Uh, everybody is very optimistic. The general was wrong. The communist had a New Year's surprise. It was called the Tet Offensive, and it caught the South and the American High Command flat-footed. The invasion was less a military victory than a devastating blow to the hawks back in the states, who almost had convinced the public the war was winnable. Tet suggested it was not. President Johnson responded by throwing more young Americans at Vietnam, and the young responded angrily. Because I have a son that's going to go into the army. And the campuses erupted. At the University of Minnesota, anti-war activism was being born in a young man named Bill Tilton. He would later help lead the new mobilization committee to end the war in Vietnam. The government was no longer truthful. The government, in addition, did evil things, uh, was killing people. Uh, you know, culture changed. All of a sudden, Rock and roll was in, uh, you know, th there was, there was a dim different tempo to society than had existed before. But the anti-war movement was only one of hundreds afoot in 1968. Blacks who had begun a march to equality at the dawn of the decade began to feel the momentum of their movement slow. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had started to lose his power base. More and more blacks were turning away from his peaceful, non-violent approach to the more strident voices of Stokely Carmichael and H. Rap Brown. The rebellions that we see are merely dress rehearsals for the revolution that's to come. We better get ourselves some guns and prepare ourselves. Dr. King had lost part of his support because he began speaking out against the war, not only as a pacifist, but because of its inherent racism, sending thousands of black men to fight a white man's war against the yellow man. And then in Memphis, Dr. King was murdered. At 7.10 this evening, Martin Luther King was shot in Tennessee. Riots erupted in 168 cities. 21,000 were injured. Hate burned in the eyes of hundreds of disenfranchised blacks, denied the man who had promised hope. Four days earlier, the president who escalated Vietnam, but who had passed the most sweeping domestic programs in history, abdicated the presidency, chased from office by the ghosts of the young dead, and a war he couldn't win. I shall not see, and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. America began to look closely at itself in 1968, and many people, young and old, came away not liking what they saw. My thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. Bob Kennedy fit 1968. He was a paradox. He was rich, and the poor loved him. He orchestrated his brother's invasion of Cuba, and the anti-war forces rallied behind him. Then in California, on his way to the presidency, he too was dead. The Republicans chose Richard Nixon because he promised to beat any candidate the Democrats could pick at Chicago. Chicago. If 1968 was a civil war, Chicago was Gettysburg. Inside the convention, Minnesotan Hubert Humphrey, who had wept at the scene outside, accepted his party's nomination. Humphrey would lose the presidency. He said that Chicago had defeated him. Richard Nixon would say later, the Republicans did not win. The Democrats had lost. And the rest, as they say, is history. Still to come was Kent State, the end of Vietnam, the fall of Saigon to the communists, Watergate, all in their own way, owing their origins to 1968. 
It was a year of rebirth and death. It was the rebirth of the idea that democracy was, for better or worse, in the hands of the people. And 1968 brought the death of blind trust and allegiance in one's country. And after 1968, we would cease to elevate men to hero status. 1968 robbed us of one certifiable hero in Dr. King. The year took from us another man who was heir to the hero's legacy, Bob Kennedy. Tomorrow night, Dave Nimmer reports on those assassinations. Later on, we're going to hear about two Minnesotans who played a big role, Hubert Humphrey and Gene McCarthy in 1968. All right. Thank you for your report, John. Thanks for coming in, Dan.